We're going to try something new here. Going to look at just one play and kind of look at each different component of that play and, and follow it through. This is a game where it's first inning, bottom of the first, one out, have a runner on second base. And uh, let's just watch it forward in real time and see what happens. So there you have it. That was a 9-2-6 out at second base for the second out. So what we're going to do is we're going to, we'll go back and uh, start this over. Before we even begin it, let me, let me explain something that we have here with our outfielders. Outfielders, the further along you get in baseball, the, the more critical those players are. And this is a strategy that we used in order to... And a strategy I basically stole from some, all my strategies I stole from somebody at some point. So, so here you have your right fielder, and in our uh, idea of who should play right field, needs to be somebody who has a good strong arm, because you're going to have a lot more uh, potential for a uh, nine three or a nine two out than anywhere else in the uh, outfield. Also, if the ball gets past the uh, right fielder. It's uh, a triple. If it gets past the le uh, left fielder, it's usually just a double. So, so right fielders usually we think they're they have to be a little bit stronger, at least in their arm. And you'll notice that the right fielder here is moved up and a little bit shaded towards uh, center field, and our left fielder is back quite a ways, and our center fielder's playing just a little bit to the left field side. And what we'll do is, so our pitcher here is a slower thrower. He gets out by throwing junk. Uh, one of our better pitchers, uh, more effective pitchers. And so with a pitcher that's throwing slower with a right-hander up to bat, we want our left fielder back and our right fielder up to take away those little bloopers that they hit. Um, if they're going to hit to the opposite field, it's typically going to be a, not a very hard hit. So they'll fall in front of a right fielder if he's playing back too far. So that's, that's the reason why he's up. And um, I don't know who this is because they, uh, they're so far away you can't make out who it is. Um, but I want you to watch how he approaches this ball. He does an absolutely great job of um, keeping that runner at second from uh, scoring. So let's play it forward. All right, so we're going to pa pause it right here. You see the second baseman was going for that ball. And... Um, so the second baseman is, in this situation, going to be holding the runner, and so he's pulled closer to the base. Um, had we had done it the other way, he probably would have been able to field this ball for a simple 4-3, but then this wouldn't have been a very fun video to watch. Um, obviously, we're going to have him hold because with a slower pitcher and right-hander up, pulled balls are much more likely, so our shortstop has to be ready for that. So he can't get the ball, and now he is way out of position to be a cut for anything. There's not a whole lot he can do once he misses this ball. Now on a larger field, you're gonna see your pitcher wanna back up your catcher more, and your first baseman's gonna end up being a cut. Uh, those advanced cuts are, well, they're advanced. And in youth baseball, you don't have a ton of time to go spend hours and hours working on cuts. So you're going to see that the pitcher becomes the cut to four, and the first baseman uh, becomes more of a spectator. He is actually looking for a 9-3, and then when that doesn't happen, uh, he's no longer going to be able to be a cut anyway, so there's not much for him to do. So let's see how this uh, right fielder approaches the ball. All right, right there. In fact, let's back it up just a little bit because you're going to see... You're going to see that he takes a arc towards that ball. He's not just going straight towards it because when he fields that ball, he has to be in the position to be able to throw it. And he may not know at this point whether he's going to go to first base, if it's a really slow runner, or if he's going to go home. And this entire time while he's fielding this ball, he's listening to, at this point, it's going to be the catcher because the second baseman's got no clue what's behind him. 
Uh, shortstop's going to cover second, and the catcher has view of everything on the field, so the catcher's going to detect dictate what's going to happen. You see the catcher is watching the runner, seeing the effect that runner's going to try to score, and um, and if he thinks that runner's going to try to score, he's going to ask for the ball. So let's see what happens then. Okay, so the uh, runner wasn't slowing down at all as he was approaching first, third base, and so he's yelling to cut four. Now, a cut four typically means you're going to throw it to the cut, and the cut's going to throw it to the, the uh, catcher. Now, with this, this right fielder and his arm and where he's positioned close, there would really be no need to cut, but you're going to see that the pitcher's going to try to cut because he, again, is not looking at the runners. He's listening to the catcher, and the catcher said cut four. So he's going to attempt to cut, and, and we're thankful that he wasn't able to because the uh, right fielder airmailed it just a little bit too much. And here it comes. Okay, so he goes up, misses the cut. Um, great throw by the right fielder. Did exactly what he was told to do. And, um, and then if the cut's missed, since the cut is in line with where the destination of the ball is supposed to go, it ends up getting there anyway. That's, that's how cuts work, by the way. When you're cutting to four, cutting to three, cutting to two, wherever you're going to be the cut to, you need to line yourself up, if you're the cut, between the person throwing the ball and the base where it's supposed to go. So then again, if the ball misses the cut, or if you decide to let the ball go through, it's on its way to the correct destination anyway. All right, so let's back up just a little bit because I want to see what the runner does. So you see the runner going to first base, and he's reading the play. All right. All right, he puts the brakes on right there as he's hitting first base. This is not how you want to round that bag on a ball like this. Um, he's clearly not going to have a play at him. The first baseman's um, positioning himself for you to run around him, and you should be rounding that bag hard, not putting the brakes on at all. All right, once he sees that the first, the, the pitcher's not going to cut that ball, then he's got to start back up running again, which is why he ends up being thrown out. And here we see our shortstop, who has learned a lesson that we had practiced a lot this year of letting the ball travel. Uh, doesn't necessarily need to be on this, his knees, but... One thing that I did go over with a lot of fielders is that you want to keep your eyes behind the ball when you're fielding it, and you want to stay low, um, you know, bend your knees, and for whatever reason, he ends up on his on his knees, uh, but he's got this out clearly. And then checks the runner at third, makes sure he's, he's not going anywhere. So now let's watch that runner at second base because that's another important um, aspect of this play. All right, so here comes this, the hit. He reads the balls on the ground, and he's flying around that bag and waits until his coach says, back, back, back. So the runner that was on second did a perfect job. Everything he was supposed to do couldn't have done it any better. Um, was never going to score on that, on that play. So really, our only... Um, mistake in the entire play is probably the runner at that's running first so really great great play all around well we didn't really talk about the catcher so let's talk about the catcher okay cut four cut four he's he's well we did say he was watching that runner once he knows that runner's going back let's back this up again watch it in slow motion so he hears and probably sees in his peripheral vision that the runner that, that was coming home is no longer coming home. Now all he's going to care about is that runner at first base. He has to field a long hop, so he positioned himself on the throw to be all the way back here because had he not, had he moved up to field an in-between hop, the chance of him fielding it at all are slim, and by the time he knew that the ball wasn't going to be cut, there was no possibility for him to be able to get the short hop so he wants to be moving towards the throw. And so if you see how he approaches this, all right, arms up. He backs up two really short steps, 
fields the ball and makes a throw. So I, you know, I don't know that he could have read that much, much differently. Obviously, if he knew, he could have backed up a little bit more and then walked into the catch. But uh, you know, that's being excessively picky, and that's there's to play. Happens quite a bit. Most of the time from outfield, the uh, ball is going to be 20 feet over the catcher's head. The run's going to end up scoring. The guy on the batter's going to end up on second base, and if not third base. And so it's really essential for the right fielder when throwing that ball to keep that ball down. It's easy to judge a hop from that distance and to catch a, a ball that bounces. It's impossible to catch one that's 10, 20 feet over your head. So that was uh, that was spectacular. So this is the first of this type of video that we put out. Let us know in the comments if you think we should do more of these. And check out these other videos here.